shots. They look young and rattled. Absolutely shell-shocked. Champions are made after the fall. It takes four games in a series. We're, we're not out of this thing. It's either now or never. Your backs are now against the wall. The Stanley Cup Playoffs. This is The Drop, our ESPN Hockey Digital Show. New York City! <laughs> it's the concrete jungle. Our jungle, baby. Are fulfilled and made of. If you can make it there, you can make it anywhere. Will the Rangers make it out of tonight, though? They're facing elimination oh. at the hands of the Pittsburgh Penguins. PK, you didn't like this game so much. Well, guys you? are saving their ankles, clearly. No basketball today. <laughs> because hey, you're look, not there to exactly. play. Exactly. I'd be snapping it's ankles. Sid's old hat he loves to wear. I love that hat. Yeah, that needs a wash. He'll break some ankles today. Igor, he's meditating. He, he's he's thinking of giving up four goals of a clip to the Penguins in the series. He's, he's thinking, thinking about of. how not to do this that. This guy's all world, man. I, I, yeah. I like Shostak. I, I watched him play this year. I think he's all world. So three games tonight, starting with the Rangers and Penguins. Welcome to The Drop. Thanks for watching us on ESPN Twitter, YouTube, wherever you're watching us. We appreciate it. Look who's here. The man himself. The n But he's great on the ice, but he is a rookie broadcaster. Second <laughs> rookie. year. Second year. I guess <laughs> not so much a rookie anymore, right? No, I'm rookie. Because this is year two. Rookie. Yeah. I'm rookie. So it's, But it's okay. I, I like it. I enjoy doing yeah. it. Thanks for having me on. No, and yeah. I appreciate everybody who's been... Uh, sending their comments in and telling me I've been doing a great job. Uh, including Julian Edelman, Scotty Upshaw, Updog. Yep. Updog, shout out to Updog. <laughs> Updog yeah. and Missing Curfew Boys, love you guys. Yeah. We love Jimmy as well. God bless him. First of all, yeah. can we talk about the sneakers? What are we wearing here? These are the Bad Bunny Adidas sneakers. So Bad Bunny, these are his shoes. He did a collab with Adidas. Wow. And I'm sporting them right now. I love these shoes. They're comfy. And uh, some big games today, so I got to be ready to. I got to be ready to perform. Exactly. Here, get a side profile. What do you got on those socks there? Those. Uh, oh, these socks. And cigars. Oh, some cognac I mean, and some cigars. Oh, classy cognac and, cigars, cognac and, cigars, cognac and cigars, baby. Guy. Look at wow. that. Look at those. Absolutely love it. Fresh to death. I love it. Love it. All right, let's talk some hockey, PK. All right, so let's do it. we got some series. Yesterday, we were on the desk seeing a lot of games being pushed yeah. to the brink of elimination here. If you were to think about, maybe Toronto comes to mind here at Tampa because of the defending champs, but if you were to think of one series where uh, it would be devastating for a team to lose in the first round of the playoffs, which team would you pick? Well, you know, everybody's going to look at Florida and what they've done this year, and, and rightfully so. Um, you know, I think that that series has been tight. It can go any other way. I think they're playing well. That's the most important thing is they're playing really well. I think for Toronto, you look at the past couple of years, it's been tough for them how they've lost. You yeah. know what I mean? Being up uh, in a series to Montreal, them coming back and winning. That's not the case this year. These guys have showed up. Their big guys have stepped up and played well. And as a team, too, I think that they, 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 you can, they have more confidence as a team. You can see they believe that they can win. Now they're up 3-2. Um, you know, they have a hell of an opportunity to close this thing out in Tampa. And what a way to do it. They go to Tampa. They close this thing out. I'm telling you right now, uh, there's not going to be a team more confident than them. But if they lose this series, uh, it, it's tough. You know, you, yeah. you're you not sure what's going to happen in the offseason, if they're going to make changes or not. Um, this is a good group. They're good kids. They're good hockey players. Uh, I'm pulling for them. I want to see them do well. It kind of reminds me of, like, the Capitals-Penguins thing. Like, once the Caps got past the Penguins, then it was like, here we go, we're going to win the Cup. Now, like, yeah. if the Leafs can get no. past the first There's round. There's pressure on these guys. Uh, they got to get it done, right. you know. They got to get it done. That's the pressure on them right now yeah. is to get it done. And, uh, uh, listen, last night they showed a lot of character, and they should yes. feel good about that. Yeah. They should feel good about that. So, I, I, you know, we'll see. But definitely that's the team that I would say. We got you here. You're an all-world defenseman. Mm -hmm. I wanted to ask you about Kale McCarr. Oh. McCarr, 10 points. Where do you want me to games. start? Well, give us a scout. <laughs> I might start sweating. Can I take my jacket? I might start sweating. Uh, tell tell, me, tell us him. what, from a defenseman's perspective, what makes him as good as he is. Okay, well, I'll start with Roman Yossi first. Okay. Because that was the guy who always made my the hair on the back of my neck stand up. <laughs> Playing with him. First of all, love him as a guy. Yeah. Uh, great guy, great leader, but an amazing hockey player and a great defenseman. And see his career kind of take off the past couple of years. But with Kale McCarr, you know, uh, he does so many things 
really, really well. Mm. But his skating separates him from everybody. Yeah. You know, and they showed, I think it was last night, they had it up on the screen. They showed Paul Coffey, Bobby Orr, a few other defensemen, and I said Brian Leach. And I said right away, what do these guys have in common? They can all skate. And skate like the wind. I'm not talking about skate fast, effortlessly. And this guy, he's explosive. His hips, the way he turns, his mobility, uh, his deceptiveness. Um, he skates better than anybody else in the league. I mean, he's in the category with Connor McDavid and these guys in terms of skating. And you saw what he did to close out the game in Nashville. Um, he can do it all. This guy's a special player. To me, a special player for a long time. I'm still a little bit upset at him because when I played against him, I was trying to give him his flowers. I'm like, yo, Kale, yo, Kale. He was just dialed in and focused. Oh, he didn't acknowledge <laughs> you? Oh, no. I mean, I'm sure he heard me. Maybe he thought I was chirping him, but I'm like, I'm like, Kale, I'm trying to give maybe you your flowers, thought, man. Maybe he thought like, you wanted to go. No, I'm not fighting <laughs> Kale. I mean, I want to see him on the ice. I want to watch him play. No, uh, the opposite, actually, on during the intermissions, and I'm with you. You're saying we have a little bit of a man crush on Kale. I'm with you there, man. Listen, man, I just got a man crush on how he moves out there yeah, yeah, yeah. and his skating Absolutely. ability. It's that his hockey IQ through the roof. Yeah. His shot, he's got all the skill, all the tools, but his skating separates him from everybody else. Let's talk about this. This is always a topic going into the postseason, but yep. we're actually kind of seeing it this year. Yep. We always hear about, oh, there's great scoring in the regular season, but things are going to buckle down in the postseason. We're not going to see as many yeah. goals. But it feels like there has been this postseason. Do you, are you noticing anything different? Like, what, what is the reason we're seeing such a burst in scoring in the first round? Well, this is a new NHL now. Mm. You know, uh, first of all, it's a younger league. You have players that are coming in. We see the Trevor Zegras and these guys that can make those skill plays. This is the league now. And by the way, if you're a fan, you don't want to see this. You don't want to see this every night. Oh, Johnny Hockey going in, breakaways, these types of plays, skilled defensemen. Uh, everybody can play right up and down the lineup now. You, you know, when I first got in the league, you, you know, the first two lines can score goals, and the third and fourth line were guys that were just physical and clogging up. That's not the case in the NHL anymore. Everybody can skate. Everybody can play. And special teams is huge. You look at the special teams, uh, you know, some of these guys with the skill that they have, that's where the difference is. And uh, I think it's hard to be a goaltender in this league now. It's hard to be a defenseman in this league, and that's what makes these guys so special. The Kale McCars, the Roman Yossis, the Victor Hedmans, the top defensemen in the league, uh, and their ability to be able to defend. It, it's a tough league to defend in because of the talent and the skill that's there and the rule changes. You can't hook and hold. You yeah. can't impede anymore. Um, you can be 5-4 and play in the league now. You know what I mean? <laughs> so it's that's the league, and I, I like it. I think it's great for the game. Fans want to see scoring. Fans want to see skill. So that's what the NHL yeah. is now. Uh, not every time we do the show uh, do we get a potential Oscar nominee sitting <laughs> with us. Oh. You, of course, sir, were in Jackass Forever. Yes. Uh, you took uh, slap shots and at a gentleman's crotch yep. to do a, ch a cup check. What was that like? It was uh, it was a great experience. First of all, I, I mean, I, I love Jackass. That's my era. Yeah. I mean, but now it's the Nelk Boys, right? Like, right. it's the Nelk Boys and what they do. And shout out to the Nelk Boys. But I grew up watching Jackass. Johnny Knoxville, the whole gang, Danger Dan, Wee Man, Steve-O, all the boys, they're great. I don't know what it is with the hair that I had going on. It's like a <laughs> 70s afro, 60s afro I had going on there. I'm like wincing watching that. I, the, the scene, if you haven't see it and it's like my god okay <laughs> so, so everybody good. asked me okay how many shots did it take i'm gonna come clean i'm gonna put this out there i took like maybe six shots total <laughs> the first shot and and by the way i was rusty I, I hadn't this is during the pandemic that this got shot like i hadn't been on the ice for a couple months so i get out there i'm using a brand new stick i get out there and they're like okay johnny goes pk first shot uh I'm like, you want me to hit him in the groin, right? He's like, no, 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 no. First shot, we want you to drill him in the head. <laughs> I'm like, pardon me? And I look at, like, Zach, my, my manager, W, and he shout out to Zach Miller. He's, and I'm like, Zach. And he's like, well, dude, you're covered. Like, you're good. Like, you, you know what I mean? Right. I, he's like, I, just try not to kill the guy. And Johnny goes, no, 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 no. We want you shooting as hard as you can. I'm like, dude, he's got a player's helmet on. Like, he doesn't have a goalie's helmet on. He goes, no, shoot. <laughs> Pucks at the top of the circle. I skate in from the red line. First shot. 
bam, right off of his shield. He's down on the <laughs> ice. Yard sale. Him. We call it yard sale <laughs> yeah, in hockey. Course, I mean, if you needed to get blockers, sticks, whatever, you could pick him up and run. He was down on the ice. They took him back in the room for 25 minutes, half hour. <laughs> I'm sure they had smelling salts under his nose. He came back out. And then it took me, it took me about four or five shots to hit him in the groin. The first one hit him here. Oof. And then I hit him on the inside of the leg. And then I hit him in the stomach twice, and then I Which, finally Which, by the way, those him. would hurt, too. Let's oh, just be yeah, honest. Yeah. A big yeah. man slap shot if on the inside go, of the leg? I don't know if, if everybody saw it, but if you go back oh, to that picture when we're all standing around the net, yeah. like, he had, by the way, this part. Yeah, like, look at him. Look at his legs. Like, oh, what type of padding my. does he have there? <laughs> right? But you that guys can't ridiculous. see this. But his rear end is all cut out. Right, it's bare. No, it's bare. Yeah. His rear end, there's oh. nothing on his <laughs> rear end. Does not look fun at Absolutely all. Absolutely nothing. PK, I know you got to run. You're going to be doing wraps tonight, meaning you'll be on during the intermissions pre-post game like you were yesterday. That was a ton of fun. Thanks for being here, Mike. Thank You're you. The man. Thanks, PK. Man. Puck daddy, baby. The <laughs> juice. Let's go. The squeeze. Now, now we'll take you to our next interview. <laughs> All right, please welcome to the drop wrestling superstar and celebrity puckhead CM Punk, where tonight he is at UBS Arena, home of the New York Islanders for AEW Dynamite. Punk, they fired Barry Trotz. What's up with that? I don't know. It's something in the water here that makes people do weird, wacky, wild stuff. You, you wouldn't fire Barry Trotz. Take you guys out of the basement to two conference finals. I, I don't know what they're doing, but I am interviewing for the job. Thank you for asking. <laughs> Brilliant. Uh, so you and your career, along with aspirations to be a coach, you've been a uh, baby face. You've been a heel in your career. In your estimation, Punk, who is the biggest heel right now in the National Hockey League? Tom Wilson? It's oh, always Tom Wilson. Oh, yes. Right? Good choice. It's always, it's always Tom Wilson. Uh, Gary Bettman is like a 1B one, one in that 1A <laughs> situation. Um, I mean, every year he comes out to present the cup to the, the, the winner, and, you know, you can't hear what he's saying because everyone's booing the crap out of him. Uh, I, I think those are, those are good two top two uh, tag team bad guy heels. Where do you stand on Brad Marchand of the Boston Bruins? <laughs> Uh, if I stood on Brad Marchand of the Boston Bruins, it would make me uh, seven foot two. <laughs> <laughs> now, you know, he is infamous for having once licked an opponent. I wanted to ask you, sir, uh, have you ever stooped to licking an opponent in the ring? And if not, why not? Uh, oh, man, the dirty things I could say. No, I've never licked an opponent. Um, Brad Marchand, I know, grew up, uh, I think, a big Bushwhackers fan. <laughs> so, I mean, look at look, look, look. Well, I mean, there's there's drawing a penalty and then there's there's Brad Marchand trying to draw a penalty. You know what I mean? What a what a legend. What a freak. Exactly. He's, that's he's doing. Kids, you're 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 in peewees. You're you're in midgets playing hockey. That guy will do anything to win. Maybe don't follow his lead, but, you know, you, you can find some sort of a lesson in there. <laughs> All right, let's take it the other way. Who's the biggest baby face in the NHL right now? <sighs> oh, boy. Um, is there one? That's a harder one. I, I mean, I think there is. I think by default, I would say like a Joe Thornton, you know, guy who hasn't won the cup, has a 20-plus year uh, stellar career. Uh, and you know, if I'm ever going to root for a Florida team, it's the one that Joe Thornton's on because I want to see him, you know, raise the cup. He's, he's a good choice. Um, I think, uh, I, I think there's a lot of players that, that fit that mold, I, but I do definitely think there's more heels than there's baby face. I would agree with that. Good job. Joe's got a major approval rating in this league. I think from players and fans, it's a good choice there. So you are a Blackhawks fan. You're from Chicago. Where, how'd you get into the Blackhawks? I mean, was it just the Chicago thing or was it another reason? I, yeah, I definitely think it was the Chicago thing. I remember going to see games at uh, the old uh, Chicago stadium and just being in awe of like what was going on. You know, there were, I think there were a lot of fights. 
Uh, and I know we're trying to get away from that as a culture, uh, but there were more fights in the stands than there was on the ice. And that just, in, it just intrigued me. It just seemed like a circus in the best possible way. Loudest arena I've ever been in, in my entire life. Uh, and it just kind of captured my young imagination. The first monetary bet I ever made in my entire life was, uh, I think it was 92 uh, Hawks Penguins in the finals. I bet a kid named Ryan Collins in my fifth grade class, uh, five bucks. And then the Hawks got swept. So I'm not a big fan of like the Mario Lemuse or the Ron Francis's of the world. <laughs> uh, still holding on to that grudge. And rightfully so. Now the Blackhawks are going through, let's call it a transitional phase for their franchise. Uh, yes. what, what do you think happens to Jonathan uh, Taves and Patrick Kane, man? Do you think that they see it all the way through and retire as Blackhawks? Do you think they might not be there until the end? I think if you're a fan, there's a romantic aspect of saying these guys are Blackhawks their entire career, but I know the type of competitors they are. They, they want to win. And hockey is possibly the ultimate team sport, right? If I, I, I do believe if you're in, in football, if you have an outstanding quarterback and some great wide receivers, you can hold it down and make it to the Super Bowl. I think hockey is where, man, if you have a great goalie, but your, your blue line is lacking, you know, you're, you're not going to make it through the playoffs. It's the hardest, you know, trophy to win in sports. So these guys want to be put in that position. Um, they very much were the young guys coming into an older team that it was going nowhere. And now they find themselves kind of the older guys on a team that currently is in the basement. So as a competitor, I know Jonathan Taves is like, mm, we got to turn this thing around. I don't know how much time I have. And I kind of draw parallels to my career, you know, like I'm, I'm 43 and I started wrestling again this year or last year. Um, I don't know, six, eight months ago. And I look at it now, like every day is I'm so fortunate and it's a gift and I want to do the best I possibly can. in what I know is short time. Exactly. And look at, hey, Taves, if you're watching this, take inspiration from CM Punk. The man is wrestling for the AEW World Heavyweight Championship in Vegas later this month, the double or nothing, taking on Hangman Adam Page. Hangman Adam Page said he's going to destroy and embarrass you. How do you answer these, these accusations? It's outrageous, Punk. Eh, you know, listen, I've been Adam Page. I've been 30 with a chip on my shoulder thinking I was a champion of the world and better than everybody. Uh, and he is a tremendous competitor. Uh, Adam Page has not been me. He's not been 43 with the wealth of knowledge and experience that I come with, uh, cherishing the fact that for a guy like me, there is no tomorrow. It's all about double or nothing and the AEW world title. And I look at this as like almost it's my last shot. You know, everything else uh, that happens after this, there, there, there is no tomorrow. So I, I, I'm going to go out there and I'm going to do everything I can, try to win the belt till the wheels fall off. All right, speaking of championships, real quick, do you have a Stanley Cup pick? I do, but, man, my bracket's already, I feel like it's shot. <laughs> uh, there's, only, there's only one team out, and let's, let's please, round of, round of applause for the, uh, the Nashville Predators. Good job, guys. You really, you really, you really, you really held off the Colorado Avalanche. Uh, no offense, this is the way things work. Y'all got to make fun of us when you swept us a couple years ago, and now, man, we're just pointing and laughing at you. Um, Colorado's my pick, but man, I, you know, I, I mentioned Zero Thornton earlier and I'd really like to see him, you know, hoist the cup, but there's other teams that I feel like are built to win like Calgary. Uh, there's, it's going to be tough. It's going to be really, really tough. Uh, the Penguins are surprising me. Um, the Kings are surprising me too. Exactly. All right. The great CM Punk. Thank you for joining the drop, my friend. No problem. Thanks for having me. Appreciate you guys. Big thanks to CM Punk for joining the show. Playoff hockey tonight on ESPN and ESPN2. The doubleheader is on E1. Penguins Rangers at 7, followed by Stars and Flames at 9.30. The Caps and Panthers, 7.30 over on ESPN2. Of course, CM Punk is from the great city of Chicago, known for its deep dish pizza. Mm. 
Speaking of food, we'll, we'll get to the pizza debate another time. Yeah. But right now, we're going to debate our top five food-related stories of the Stanley Cup playoffs. There's always a ton of them. Mm -hmm. One of them is much larger or more viral, we should say, than others. But we're going to order them anyway. Yeah. What do you got for us? We love ranking. Uh, number five is Skittles. Uh, Skittles were allegedly thrown at Kale McCarr of the Colorado Avalanche at the end of their series against the Nashville Predators. Uh, Kale said that the fans threw Skittles at him, which, uh, by the way, don't throw stuff at players ever. Never do Don't it. Stuff anything, but, anyone. But, you're right. But some good came out of this, Arda, which is that. Well, this graphic is a good thing. First <laughs> of all, whoever made this, props to you. Kale informed us all the difference between American and Canadian Smarties. American Smarties are small and chalky. Apparently, Canadian Smarties are like M&Ms. Uh, uh, yes, Canadian okay. Smarties are M&M equivalent, and actually, the Smarties in America, Canadians call them rockets. Oh, wow. We call arugula rocket. Number four on the list <laughs> is, of course, the catfish from Nashville. Uh, I've had hot catfish in Nashville. I like it better than hot chicken. But here's the problem with this catfish that hit the ice in Nashville. Aww. I only like these catfish now when they dress them up. Remember when they put a the little cowboy yeah. hat on top of the catfish? Where is the cowboy hat? Where is the rally towel? This is a buck naked Catfish, and it has to be number four in the that list. That can't be the case. Before we move on, how on earth do these fish keep getting into the arena? Well, Arda, people uh, tape them to their legs I don't and they hear sneak this. them in. Now, it's a whole thing. Don't worry about it. I now, I, well. number three on this list, we're going to go to Pittsburgh. We're going to go with this incredible quesadilla concoction that they've made in Pittsburgh. It's got Doritos inside of it. It is a, look at that thing, oh, my delicious. God. Outstanding. Flour tortillas stuffed with pulled chicken, bacon, cheddar jack cheese, and a surprise snack food addition, Doritos inside of it. My friend, 100%. I went to college, I was up at four in the morning, I'm pretty sure I made, I invented that back at Maryland. Um, number two on the list, sir. Yes. Number two on the list has to be something that the Washington Capitals gifted us uh, this postseason, and that would be uh, it's incredible. What? No, no, no. Yes. Why do we keep bringing normal foods in with desserts? Separate them. We don't need this, Greg. We don't need this. In the grand tradition of the Krispy Kreme burger comes the cinnamon roll spicy chicken sandwich. I think we've now reached spice, uh, peak spicy chicken sandwich. I don't know if we have to do any more of them. Uh, shout out to... <laughs> Shout out to the Capitals for making something that Arda viscerally has reacted to. Why do we need this? Tell me. <laughs> Explain this to me on social media. Why do we need deep fried bacon? Why do we need Krispy Kreme burgers? Why don't you eat a burger? A normal burger with a normal bun or bunless if you're avoiding carbs. Why do you need the sugar and the salt at extreme levels? All right, but what if, uh, what if you're hunting carbs and want to eat a cinnamon roll chicken sandwich? <laughs> All right, number one on the list, this obviously, is an easy number one, yes. the inspiration for this entire thing, Louis Domingue's spicy pork and broccoli that powered him, much like spinach does Popeye, to a win in game one and has powered him since. In fact, Arda, I've been seeing in, in Pittsburgh now, fans are making this dish before the games. I'm sure there are some Good. people eating spicy pork and broccoli before uh, game five. Uh, game, uh, Game five. Uh, and, and in fact, I saw somebody feed their dog out of a miniature Stanley Cup That's some awesome. spicy pork and broccoli. You know what's missing from the spicy pork and broccoli? A Snickers bar. <laughs> While I roll myself back, here is the Western <laughs> Conference playoffs as they stand right now. Only the Avalanche have qualified oh. for the second round. They await the winner of the Wild and Blues. Prayers up for Connor and Leon. My God. Losing to the Kings in the first Prayers round, dude. But it's teams. honestly like, dude, they did everything they could last night to try to drag that they team to a win. They didn't touch the puck once in overtime. Not a single nanosecond did the Edmonton Oilers touch the puck in that overtime. Over in the East, you got three elimination situations and the Panthers and Caps are tied at two. Hey, I like the redemption story. Of, yeah. Imagine the Leafs, the first playoff win since 2004, but they not only dethrone the reigning champs, but they also break that 17 straight winning after a loss records or streak that the Tampa See, Bay Lightning have. Right. That would be part of the narrative. Now, here's the question I have for you. Are the playoffs actually good this year? <laughs> I'm going to say yes, okay. but I value entertainment right, a lot right. more well, than okay. anything else. So, so, so on the one hand, 
they've been not very competitive on the ice in some of these games. Okay. We've only had four overtimes through uh, games five last season. We had 13 overtimes. Uh, 29 of 36 games so far have been decided by two or more goals. Great for the puck line. Not so great for tight games at the end. Um, so that's the, that's the bad news story. The good news story is we just saw in all those brackets – all the series are tight outside of the Avalanche sweep. Yes. So we got that. And I also think the fact that we've got 6.64 goals per game in the playoffs, which is actually up from the scoring in the regular season, has been great because what we're dealing with is superstars doing superstar things. Look who's making a difference in these playoffs. It's Connor McDavid. It's Austin Matthews. It's Brad Marchand. It's Jonathan Quick. It's Sidney Crosby. Like, all of these Run it back. All of these hero moments that we're seeing in these playoffs, because the top stars are usually held in check in previous seasons when it's all a bunch of 2-1 games, that's usually where, like, your Yanni Gord scores the big goal instead of it being, like, Steven Stamkos, right? So I think the fact that scoring is so up in these playoffs has allowed the stars to shine on the biggest stage, which is what the playoffs should be. Kroll Kaprizov! Krill the Thrill setting Minnesota Wild records. Austin Matthews. I mean, how beautiful was this? No, I lo- Mitch Marner makes that play. That's a whole other thing. But, yes, Austin Matthews scoring the game-winning goal in a pivotal game, maybe the most yeah. important game for the Leafs in quite some time. Right. Absolutely right. agree. So we're, we're getting blowouts. Yeah. But we are getting star quality performances from our stars, which is good enough for me. In a minute or less, let's talk Penguins and Rangers. Shesterkin is going to be the focus. He is starting. He was pulled the last two games. What are you thinking for this one? I'm thinking uh, over the six and a half. (laughs) I'm thinking thinking this. I think that Gerard Gallant challenged his team in a way that no coach has so far this postseason by saying they played soft in front of Igor Shesterkin. And to me, if I'm a Rangers player, I take that to heart. And I say to myself, I've got to be at my best in this game. So I like the Rangers actually to extend this series to six games. Yeah, I think I do. So he'll do that uh, as well. I, I would be shocked if they didn't play their best game of the series. Uh, that said, I do think we're going to see a good number of goals. I, I don't have the confidence that all of a sudden Igor is going to pitch a shutout in this game or anything. I think we're going to see a lot of goals in this game. Before we move on, though, the thing is, is that Igor Shesterkin can still have the game of his life. But... The people in front of Igor Shesterkin are going to have to stop the likes of Sidney Crosby, Jake Gensel, Brian Rust, who've been on fire this series. They have, they have. And let's not sleep on the miracle it is Louis Domingue getting them through. Again, all you want from a goaltender, you don't have to steal games in a series, Arda. You just have to not lose games it's in true. a series. And I think that's what Louis is doing. Before we go here on The Drop, we wanted everyone to know that it is National Eat What You Want Day. Um, obviously, with the New York Islanders, uh, there is some news that the Islanders have uh, relieved Barry Trotz of their duties, and that got us thinking. The combination of the two, the New York Islanders being in the news despite them not being in the playoffs, and also it being National Eat What You Want Day, uh, it kind of reminded us of this. It has to come down to two, so give me your Stanley Cup final prediction. All right, Stanley Cup final prediction, baby. It's the New York Islanders against the Vegas Golden Knights in the final. I have a good feeling about this Islanders team in their first year in the UBS arena. I actually agree with your Stanley Cup champion. I also picked the Islanders. Can you believe it? We should not agree as much as we do. It's really sad. I'm going with the Colorado Avalanche to be the other half of that, but the Islanders will be, through grit and determination, will become your Stanley Cup champions. Well, uh, I think it's redemption time, and uh, we will be people of our word. So we're going to eat a bunch of fish uh, that the great Shelby Lacey brought in for us. Thank you to our production team, Kenny and company. Uh, brought in some nice snacks. Uh, but because we both picked the New York Islanders to triumphantly raise Lord Stanley's mug, essentially, we needed to dress the part and we needed to eat uh, ah! in the shadow oh my God. of our <laughs> dear GM. It scared the hell out of me. Uh, I think we got to dig in. All right. Thanks for watching The Drop. So here's the thing about the Islanders. They'll be fine. Okay, they really won't be fine. I don't know what their plan is. I don't know why they fired Barry Trotz, but these things happen. I mean, I'm a, I, I, I was a Devils fan. I had Lou as our GM for a very long time. Uh, he's fired That's 21 good. coaches uh, really in good. his time. Uh, but, the, you know, Barry, where does Barry Trotz go next? Um, anywhere he wants. Oh, good point. This is delicious. 
Yep. This was actually a great segment. I don't feel like we're redeeming anything. I feel like we're getting a free meal. I was. I thought we were going to have fish sticks as per the Islanders logo. It, I'm clearly eating a fish fillet. <laughs> it doesn't matter. You know what I mean. Can we get the logo back, please? I think we've had enough, Luke. Can we get the logo back? All right, never mind. All right. Uh, speaking of the Islanders, they're... Uh, rivals from a few miles away. The Rangers are in action facing elimination against the Pittsburgh Penguins. While we finish off this excellent food, you head on over to ESPN starting at 7 Eastern. Game number five. The Penguins are leading 3-1 in the series. One of an elimination game that is happening over on our ESPN networks. The Cats and the Caps are at 7.30 on ESPN2. Then the late game Flames and Stars. Enjoy the night of hockey action, everybody. This has been The Drop. Thank wow. you very much for watching. And we'll be back next week, right? Absolutely. Look at that rave outside of MSG. My God. Glow sticks. Glow sticks. I'm going to eat some fries. Bye, everyone. Can we take a picture with this stuff?